All right, now that Call of Duty Warzone has been out for one week, I figured it's a good time to share my thoughts on this game so far. As I record today's video, it is officially March 17th, 2020. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. And like I said, the game's been out for one week, so it launched back on March 10th. And a lot has changed since then. Uh, in the video game world, this game has become very popular, kind of took everything over by storm. I think some people expected that, but you know, didn't really know after uh, Blackout what was going to come of this game. And also with coronavirus, which I'm not going to be talking about too much in this video, but uh, that stuff is pretty crazy. So it's uh, going to be an interesting spring season. But, you know, we got to stay inside, at least in the U.S. here, so you can be trying out this game, which I'm definitely going to recommend doing if you haven't already. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who follow uh, my page and my stream from PUBG, and a lot of people haven't downloaded this game, but I'm definitely going to recommend giving it a try. But before we get into my thoughts and why I recommend it, I want to explain what's going on here. So you might have saw I landed right away and got in a helicopter. I found out this kind of troll strategy that if you jump right away, land on a helicopter, you can get in it and chase people down that are still parachuting into the map and take them out. And because you do receive fall damage, once you hit them and they fall, it's pretty much an instant death. So you can get a couple cheeky kills that way. And that's what I was doing in the beginning of this gameplay. Um, so I posted this online. I was just cracking up about it. I couldn't believe that this was a thing. Uh, but apparently this was also a thing in Blackout. I just didn't play that game that that much uh, but I was still pretty proud of this and I got hit up by a lot of people asking me to use this footage and uh, I got a ton of views on this so it's just uh, I guess I'm bragging a little bit but I was just enjoying the funny moment of it and uh, it's kind of a metaphor for this game that there's so much silly stuff you can do um, that might be in other games but Call of Duty does it really right and I'm having a lot of fun playing this so Let's start with the basics first, and now I'm going to uh, fly back. Or I, sh I should mention also, sorry, that uh, you know the meta right now, the strategy is, at least parachuting in, is to cut your parachute and then um, de redeploy it. And then when you redeploy it, you kind of get a boost forward. So as people get better in the game, it's going to be harder to use this helicopter strategy. So I don't know if it's going to work, but I have tried it about a half dozen times, and it's worked almost every single time. I've gotten at least one person. But as people get better, um, you know, people are going to be dropping without their shoot and getting down faster but there's always going to be some oblivious players that are just parachuting floating off in the distance that i think you're going to be able to get uh, so i get back with my teammates here three-man squads that's the default setup in this game is three-man squads 150 players uh, i think today they just announced that they're launching solos or might even be available on the live server but again i'm gonna have to play that to even talk about it and i think this game is so big and so complex that it really takes a lot of time to figure out what's going on here just like anything you can hop in and play but the more you play the more research you do the more youtube videos you watch the more you're going to find out like what's going on in this game different levels of skill, strategy, guns, setup, loadouts, so much stuff. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of layers here. Some of this for good, some of this for bad, which again, I'm going to get into in this video. So right here, we're trying to take off in the helicopter. Then I'm kind of fumbling here with my guns, uh, but luckily we can we counter on this team and are able to take them out. Um, so right now, again, 150 players. It looks like the average game is around if you finish, if you win, or maybe make it to the final circle is around 25 minutes. Um, we do end up winning this match. Of course, I'm going to use a good gameplay for uh, us to be on YouTube. I had uh, only two wins so far. This one and a clutch 1v3 or 1v4, two different teams clutch by myself. Um, but it is tough to win this game just because of the sheer amount of players and the fact that you can revive and get back into the game, which is really interesting. Um, so that makes a whole different dynamic, which again, I'm going to get into. I know I keep saying that, but I'm, I'm trying to wait till certain points in the video to kind of highlight some of the stuff. Um, so before we get into that, to me, I know a lot of people have lost faith in, faith in Call of Duty. So did I. It was my favorite video game franchise. And then um, after Ghost, to me, it went downhill. I just haven't been enjoying it as much. Some people didn't even get Call of Duty Modern Warfare who are big Call of Duty fans. Or a lot of my friends, people on the stream, just said, you know what? I'm done with it. I'm not even getting Modern Warfare. Hopefully the BR is free. And it is. And, uh, you know, I am, along with a lot of other people, I think, very pleasantly surprised with this game. To me, this is like Blackout V2. And it's also, to me, what Blackout should have been. This is a Call of Duty Battle Royale. Um, I feel like Blackout just didn't incorporate enough of what Call of Duty is all about. And I said that from the get-go, and I got a lot of flack about that. I'm like, dude, maybe there should be loadouts. They should incorporate Call of Duty into Battle Royale instead of just copying what other games are doing. And people criticize that, saying, you know, you got to follow the rules of Battle Royale. No loadouts, no this, no that. Um, but then, you know, Call of Duty publishes this game with revives, 
loadouts, a bunch of different stuff, kill streaks. There's even radar, which to me totally goes against Battle Royale, but it works and it plays so well. And it's sort of like uh, one giant game of multiplayer. <clears throat> excuse me, but with your friends. So it's sort of like this cooperative multiplayer experience, but that's Battle Royale uh, because of all the revives, because of all the stuff you can do, contracts, which are basically mini missions, which I'm going to explain in a second here too. Um, it provides this really interesting experience to me and also fixes a lot of the issues uh, with Battle Royale or a lot of the frustrating parts of Battle Royale. So this is a great example right here. So right now on the screen, I'm being on the screen, I'm being hunted by an enemy team. So what this enemy team did, is they went around the map, they found a contract, which is basically like a quest, and it was to hunt me. That it just randomly picked my team, I guess. I don't really know how that works yet, uh, specifically. There's also contracts where you have to loot maybe three loot boxes around a, a specific area of the map, and then once you finish looting them, you get uh, money for it. Basically just like a quest, like I said. Um, but what's cool about this, you know, you might think this is frustrating because we're getting attacked now, but it does tell you your threat level and how close the enemies are. But this provides sort of like a mini game in within the game. So like I said, 150 players, it's a huge map, it's so many teams, um, and it can kind of get a little overwhelming or just seem super macro. It's such a big game. Or for example, if you're in an area where nobody's at, say the storage area, we could have been in the storage area for 10 minutes just waiting for the circle close. We've all been there in a battle rail game, especially in PUBG, where the circle's closing, you're in the middle of the circle, you don't see anybody for 20 minutes. But now, because of these mini games, um, this team is is you know give, given the option to push us uh, to you know if they're aggressive players to create some excitement in the game and vice versa. Likewise, if we got this mission, we could decide: do we want to play aggressive? Is that our play style? And go look for the enemy team, or do we want to just stay in storage facility, wherever this area is called? hang here and just survive, right? And there's kind of two different ways to play Battle Royale. There's the surviving aspect and there's the aggressive way to play Battle Royale. So you kind of have an option still, but for people who want to play aggressive, there's a whole other part of the game, like I said, a mini game. And to me, this is genius. And I heard a lot of people saying they thought this game was slow, but to me, because of these mini games, I mean, another one of them is reviving. Like there's just so much to do in this game that I feel like if you want it to be busy, you can have the game always be busy. So right here, we take out those attackers, but another team gets us. I get knocked. I think I'm going to get taken out here. So this leads into getting revived and the gulag. So I'm sure if you guys are watching this video now, you know what this is by now. This is the um, 1v1 that you go into after you die. You have one opportunity to do this. Only one time do you go into the 1v1. Everyone on your team has an opportunity to do so. Eventually, I think in the top 25, this goes away so if you die before the top 25 you have an opportunity to do this this is crazy in itself and again super genius uh in battle royale pistols don't really have a purpose but in this you usually start with a pistol or a shotgun so there's a whole new meaning to becoming proficient with the pistol on top of the fact that you spawn with a pistol which is awesome so i had that in my notes that you know no other game really knows what to do with pistols unless you make it like a Apex Legends game where like there's a legendary pistol that's an absolute cannon, um, but in PUBG, for example, the pistols have no purpose. So that's really cool. That's another sort of mini game in itself, right? Instead of me just sitting now being on my phone because I'm dead, um, I get to go in the gulag and there's that exciting moment when you join back in with your team. There's a bunch of memes about it, joining back in with your squad or with the boys after winning the gulag, which is awesome. And then say, for example, I died there, then the mini game, for a seeker now, most likely, would be, instead of just winning the game, his focus would be on collecting money and finding a station for me to get revived. So if you can collect $4,500 and find a buy station, you can go there and purchase me back into the game or one of your teammates back into the game. Right now, I think you can do this in a limited amount of times uh, throughout the match as long as there's a buy station still in the zone and the outside zone is very strong this is not a game where you can go back into the zone or survive in the zone it's very very strong uh, which again is another great thing sometimes the blue zone's a little weak in PUBG, and some people criticize it uh, i think it's part of the strategy that like you know can you flank in the zone and risk reward but in call of duty if you're in the zone without a gas mask you are going to die super super fast uh, but getting back to the revive thing so then the game to me at least when my teammate dies, just goes strictly to, we got to revive this person. 
A, because I want them to be back alive and having fun. And B, because, you know, we have a better chance of winning if we have our full team in there. I'm not sure if it's going to become overpowered and Call of Duty is always going to have an opportunity to balance this stuff going forward. And that's kind of getting in the nitty gritty details, which I don't want to do in this video, maybe in a future video. But for now, I think it's a really great concept and kudos to uh, Call of Duty for crafting this kind of system in the game. And I see there's about four minutes or so left in this video. Like I said, if you win, it's about 25 minutes. I cut this down to make it a little bit quicker because I didn't want to do a 25 minute commentary. But there's also some stuff that I should have mentioned earlier in the video that um, I want to go through here that's sort of genius what Call of Duty did. So uh, again, they put in the uh, loadouts that for multiplayer, which could be overpowered. Again, it seems like this is going to get balanced. Uh, that come down like a care package or you can pay for them to come down at your location. You can go in and pick a uh, loadout and you actually get the perks that are attached to that class, which is sort of OP because once you get the perks in the game, you have like extra abilities basically not appearing on the radar. Um, so that hopefully will get fixed, but I think the idea of it is is genius again and makes it very Call of Duty-like. Uh, they got rid of attachments basically. All of the attachments are on the gun preset and depending on the rarity of the gun that you have, it doesn't increase damage or anything. It just increases the amount of attachments you have. So if you have a legendary gun, it's going to be kitted out. If you have the common version of the gun or whatever, then it might not have any scope or just a red dot. Uh, so that's a pretty cool way to do it. Because a lot of times in PUBG, you're just kind of fumbling with different attachments, takes forever for people to loot. And really, it depends on the style of game. But I think Call of Duty wants you to spend more time fighting and in the action and doing your little mini missions and going for the win than sitting there, you know, debating whether or not you want to pick up a two times or a one time scope. And so that helps. They basically taken out the health of the game. You auto regen health when you're down. And the only kind of shield system is the plate system. So no more reviving. I mean, no more healing up, having bandages, first aid kits, med kits, this kit, that kit, Kit Kat. Um, but it's just simplified. And I like that a lot. The plate system, you have 100 health. Each plate is 50 armor so then with and basically just treat the armor as additional health it protects your body and your head so if you have three plates on which is the maximum which you're, you're going to want to have at all times um, you have 250 total health you start with two plates uh, when you land so you start with 200 health and that's crucial not having the plates you go down immediately um, and you know that does feel weird though a little bit but it seems like um, from what I've learned is that headshots are super powerful in this game and that's where it's at sometimes you can just shoot somebody forever in the lower limbs or in the chest doesn't feel like much is happening but if you get those headshots people get knocked immediately so this is a game that definitely focuses on headshots but just remember that the armor is protecting your head there's just a lot of bonus damage that's given to headshots and um so yeah like i think all this stuff incorporates to less looting more gameplay the revives are pretty quick. Again, this stuff could get balanced in the future, but right now it leads to a pretty good gameplay experience that while it's still frustrating playing COD, uh, still frustrating sometimes battle royale, certain things happen to you, but it just provides a lot of fun here. Um, I have no armor. I just go down immediately. I was trying to do my best to just put some more shots down. We're in a final circle situation here. I was just hoping, look at that. And even in that situation in the open, I still get picked up. Um, and we come down with the winner, winner. Oh, never mind. The war zone victory uh, and then this is really cool too again just a small like nuanced detail but a really cool end game scene that uh, i think uh, PUBG could include obviously something different but i like being able to see all the people that were in the match and it's nice that we get to be shown off here at the end it would be maybe even cool if they incorporate some of our stats here at some point but then it goes there you go blitz five that's me we got seeker very cool and then Lady Sublime with the pink gun. Awesome. I think that's so cool, you know, to incorporate that at the end of the game. Um, so I'm sure I missed some stuff here. I've taken a bunch of notes. There's just too much to go off of. Um, I also wrote down, um, you know, there may be too many features in the game. Chances of winning are lower. So if you don't enjoy just the fun factor and the missions, like I said, you might not have fun playing this game. And, uh, you know, it's very chaotic. So it's not for everybody. But overall, I think it's really fun. And because it's free, I definitely think it's worth downloading, especially because we're going to be spending a lot of time inside. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Again, this was more of a freeform video. I did like two or three takes of this, but I um, we just wanted to talk into the microphone and share my thoughts. So if you liked the video, let me know. If you didn't, you'd rather have more precise content. Uh, feel free to share your opinions. It helps me make future content. And as always, thank you all for watching. I'm Blitz5 and peace out. Oh,